What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? This is Ring Bean. Welcome to another episode of Live Video Game Hunting. That series where I show you all these finds through yard sales, garage sales, flea markets. I go to thrift stores like Goodwill and Salvation Army, and I use apps like Let Go, Offer Up, Craigslist, Facebook, just whatever I can use to get my hands on awesome games for a good deal, and you get to see it. If you have not entered in for your chance to win that refurbished Nintendo NES done by me with a handful of awesome games, zapper, controllers, power pad, do it now because we only have two days left in the competition. Subscribers get an automatic two entries. Very excited to be able to announce that winner here in a few days. But again, if you have not entered, now is the time to do it. The link can be found in the description next to links to my Macari store, eBay store, uh, Twitch account. There's also PO Box information. It's all in the description, but most importantly, the link to that Glean contest. If you enjoy watching pickups, recaps, that sort of thing, there will be a separate video after this one that goes over all this stuff in detail. You can learn a little bit about the item and see what I get to add to my collection. With that said, guys, I apologize. I haven't been able to make a video in a few weeks, but the rain has just been atrocious. But now we got us a video, and we got some awesome stuff to go over. So sit back and relax. Let's shekel up. everybody welcome to another episode sorry it's been so long but like i said rain has just been coming down and it is very hard for me to get out and actually find anything if it's raining every day but anyways here we are with the first find uh for this video and this is one of my buddies at the flea market he always does me really good deals and like i always tell you guys be friendly with resellers you might find that you're making friends people you never even knew existed because you never gave them a chance in the first place and that's also going to lead to actually getting deals on things that you want now what I like about this guy is he does not charge eBay prices. He knows the value of these things, and he will charge a little bit more than if he was to find it in a random box at a yard sale. But, for example, he had the Game Boy Colors there for $20 for one that was complete with the back cover, the battery cover, and 10 for the other one, missing it, uh, a little bit of scratches. But that's still a pretty decent deal. What had my eye was these Game Boy games, because I'm always trying to add games to my collection. And you see, there's some pretty decent titles in here. Donkey Kong, The Lion King, there's Mario Kart, which I do end up picking up. I initially wanted $5 a piece on these games, which, again, it's not bad if you're getting titles like Donkey Kong. And like I said, you saw Mario Kart there. But he's also going to work a bundled deal. I end up getting four games, Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 2, which I needed for the collection. Same with The Lion King. And there's also the Game & Watch Gallery 2 compilation, which I didn't have. I had the first one, but I did not have it. And I ended up getting all four of those games for 15 bucks. That's, that's a stellar deal right there, because I got Mario Kart, because I'm going to resell it, recoup some of the cost. I, I can't remember the last time I sold a Mario Kart for the Game Boy Advance. I think it was like somewhere between 10 13 bucks, and, and it'll help. It'll make the games that I want, you know, only be maybe $2 a piece, and then that's completely fine with me he knows that i'm a reseller as well and he knows that i like to collect so he looks out for me and i completely appreciate that he's an awesome guy and i would not know that had i never gave this guy a chance because if you go to flea markets a lot you can spot a reseller you know how they set up they're usually very professional about it very clean and some people will just oh you know completely avoid them they'll walk right past them stop and talk to them you never know what kind of deals you're going to get so here we are at the pawn shop that you saw me get, you know, the huge score on a bunch of cheap games. I mean, they, they had a wheelbarrow full, and I was able to add a lot of games to my collection, and I got, like, an amazing deal on all that. This is that same pawn shop, and I try to stop by here every so often. It's not on my side of town, so it's it gives them plenty of time to restock. But as I come back here and look in this glass, I'm seeing the same stuff that I've really been seeing for a long time now. They're really weird about their pricing like you'll see that the 360 games basically everything but the Wii games are five dollars um which is crazy I don't know why they won't do that with the Wii games because there are a few that I would have picked up and understand I'm going to get a bundled deal by the end of all this I think I end up getting I don't know maybe two or three games here and I paid three dollars a piece for them which they're real nice if you always haggle with a pawn shop in a polite manner you're going to find that you're most likely going to get a deal so the first game you see me pick up here is Guitar Hero for the 360, but it's the Metallica version. It's easily a $15 game. 
I don't believe I had it, which is why I definitely picked it up. I was going to pick up these Call of Duties because they are kind of rising again in price, but for the condition that they were in, I left them behind. The second game you're going to see me pick up here, and now I realize it is only two games that I picked up here at this pawn shop, is Injustice Gods Among Us, the limited edition. This, again, I believe somewhere between like $13 and $15 game. Just going to help me get that Guitar Hero Metallica for free, maybe make a few bucks on top of it. Um, and like, I like to stop at these places, even though they're picked through, you can still find these little diamonds in the rough. I definitely eyeball the hell out of sports titles. I, you really got to step your game up when it comes to knowledge on pricing when it comes to sports games. There's a lot that I can miss. Uh, I've been getting better, but it's crazy the things that people leave behind simply because they feel it's a sports game. You can come to a spot that is just clearly picked through and find something. You can find an NCAA 14 or 13 Tiger Woods games, things like that. So I was happy with this stop. Like I said, I only paid $3 a piece for those two games. Able to add one to my collection, maybe make 2 or $3 after I sell the other one after fees. Uh, so I was definitely happy about it, but man, I really wish they would do that with the Wii games, because there's a game down there called Top Shot Arcade, which is just another overlooked title. Not really worth anything, but again, it's one people leave behind. It's, I think it's, I don't know, somewhere between $10, $13, but for the price of what I'm getting at, I don't mind making that extra dollar or two since I'm here. But I will say as a warning to people, if you got to find the right equilibrium for what you're paying for a game. $3 for something like this, it ha the price has to be right for what the, the game's actually worth for it to be at all profitable. Now, since I am here, I can I don't mind picking these games up. Even if I stand to only make $1.50, $2 by the end of fees and shipping, that doesn't bother me. But don't go out of your way to pick you know one or two of these games up. and You're most likely going to lose that money just in gas. But like I said, I'm happy I'm getting a game for my collection and making a few bucks. Just make sure that you find the right middle ground for what you're willing to pay and how you can understand the fees and everything else associated with reselling something online. So here I am at the Goodwill that I was working next to that I used to hate coming here because they always individually price things behind glass. But as a lot of you know now, they don't do that. They do this. And what's getting bad about this is since there's no real organization, things are just piling up and it's making it complicated for people to really look. You know, you got DVDs mixed in with games, CDs, all that. It's all over the place. Turns a lot of people off. For me, I love digging through this stuff because you never know what you can find because a lot of stuff is left behind. But for someone who's not really good at, you know, looking through the stuff, if someone's looking for a music CD and they look at this mess right here, it's, it's probably hard for them and they probably end up just walking out. And you just see this huge surplus pile up because... People just aren't taking the time to go through this stuff. So I do come across these Xbox 360 games, and they had an excellent price of $1.50 on them. I was going to pick up this Need for Speed right here, but it had Forza in there. And I opened up the Forza case, and unfortunately it had just some burned game in there. So I did leave it behind, sadly, because I know that I need that one for my collection. So that kind of sucked with that situation. But I do end up picking up the Walking Dead Survival Instincts right here. And I picked this up for two reasons. Number one... It's actually kind of awesome. It's not the greatest game. If you're a fan of The Walking Dead, it, it's really cool because it gives you a little bit of story that is not in the show. And I'm able to add it to my collection because I ended up giving my copy away to someone who wanted to play it, another fan of the series. And I'm, I'm able to add it back to my collection for a buck fifty. I did think about picking up Fable 3 because for whatever reason, I thought that that game was rising in, in price, but it is not. I left it behind. But just look at all this. Like I, to, to a normal person, they're, they're probably like, let's go look through all this stuff. And they just see all this randomness. And I'm, I'm telling you, people like organization. And I can just see a lot of people coming over here attempting to look through it and then just probably getting too overwhelmed and probably walking off. And that's why you just see all this stuff stockpiling. Um, with a little bit of organization, put things where they go. Now, you can see all these PlayStation 2 games at one point were organized together, but it, it just gets overwhelming. Take the VHSs and put them in, like, a wheelbarrow and put them beside it, because I don't know who's still after VHSs. There are collectors who go for the out-of-print stuff, but it, it just clutters everything up. Me, personally, and I'm sure a lot of game hunters will agree, I love it because I, I, I like being able to pull something out of here. Uh, it is hard, and you definitely got to have some really good peripherals but again they, they probably should clean it up and i see it at a lot of goodwills so here i am at one of the few yard sales that i've been able to attend these past couple of weeks and i asked this lady i said hey do you happen to have any old video games gave her the rundown once i said nes she's like you know what i think i got one but i don't know if i want to sell it 
And I was like, well, you know, pull out what you got and, you know, I'll make you an offer on anything you don't have. And I didn't expect her to bring out this system complete in box and in absolutely gorgeous condition. I mean, this thing was really minty. She took care of it. She's the original owner. Um, and she was, I mean, she was upset there was a sticker still on the box. So I, I thought that was crazy. Now she wanted to keep this system. I completely understand that completely, but I wanted that box. And she thought I was crazy because I was like, you know what? I'll give you $10 for the box. And she looks at me and she says, really? You give me $10 for this? I said, absolutely. You got to understand, a lot of people to them, it's just a cardboard box. It's just a container it came in. She saved it because probably it was real handy to have everything compact and stored away nicely. Uh, to me, it's a beautiful display piece and a variant to the NES system that I did not have. Now, I told her there are two conditions for me to buy this. I always like to joke with people, you know, like I'll say, if you don't have a bag, you lost a sale. I can't carry this stuff home, you know, just jokingly. And I said, there's two conditions. Number one, you got to let me keep the styrofoam, the inserts, uh, everything it came with. And she said, well, yeah, I just figured you want to take that regardless. And then I said, secondly, you got to see if you got any other games that you would want to part with, anything that you don't play anymore. And she says she does. She just has no idea where they are. Then she says the terrible words of, well, I can get your phone number and give you a call if I find them. I hate hearing that. 99.9% .9 of the time, they will not call you at all. They may end up looking at the pricing of some of this stuff. Why is this guy interested? Um, so I really tried to get them to go in that house and look for this stuff. I tell her, I was like, well, you know, people usually put games with VHSs, DVDs. The second I said that, she knew exactly where they were. And again, that's why I always stress to you guys, be friendly, put a smile on their face. She could have easily turned me down and said, well, let me just get your number. But no, she went inside and she pulled out some games for me. Now, I'll say most of the time when people have their dogs out at yard sales, um, they do it for a few reasons. You know, probably the, the main reason is, is that security. She's here by herself. She doesn't want no one coming up and going crazy on her. And secondly, the dog's most likely extremely friendly, and it's not going to bother you. Now, I will say I have been to some, to some yard sales and had some dogs get crazy at me. But when I see an animal out in the wild, i got to bother it. I don't know what it is. I just I love them. Uh, check it out. She comes out with some awesome games here. DuckTales Complete in Box. I knew right away what it was when she came out, and I saw that beautiful purple packaging. And then she had Silent Service. Not so great there, but I, I didn't have it complete in box, and now I do. And I completely understand now why she said, oh yeah, I know where they're at whenever I mentioned VHSs. Because if you didn't know what a Nintendo NES game was, and you saw it mixed in with some VHSs, you would most likely overlook it. She probably put them there years ago and just completely forgot about them. I asked her if she had any other games, and she said, well, I only got one. It's Mario Duck Hunt, and I am keeping that. I had no problem with that at all. I picked up both of these complete unbox games and that Nintendo NES box that was complete minus the system paid twenty dollars for everything that was a phenomenal deal so here i am at a different goodwill and you can kind of see a little bit better organization and things just kind of get you know thrown everywhere that's okay i didn't really find any games here but as i was looking on top of the shelf on the other side i saw this blue controller and it said sony on there and i was like oh yeah i know exactly what that is and that's something that i've been after for a while uh, and I was actually kind of jealous of Tatted Collector because he picked one of these up recently. I have one, but it's black. I wanted the blue, and that's what he got. And that is the Sony PlayStation Katana controller, the wireless controller that came out for the PlayStation 2. But now there's two downsides to this. Number one, it's missing the back cover, but so is mine. And secondly, it did not have the receiver with it. But on the bright side, it was only $3 in the condition it is now. It's, well, worth a little over 20 bucks. And my sensor for the black one should work just fine with this. So I'm definitely picking this up. So here I am Sunday at the flea market, the day that you're watching this video. I was there this morning and it was muggy, rainy. It was terrible. But I do like to get out to these places when it is like that. Even though there's not much business, there's usually not that much competition. And I came across this table right here, and this kid had this Dreamcast. And what was awesome about this kid is him and his brother owned this thing. It was theirs. I was like, man, how much do you want for this whole setup right here? He looked at me. He said, give me $40 for it. I was like, man, I'll give you 40 bucks for it. So I gave him $43 because he said he's splitting that money with his brother. I was like, well, here, you take $2 extra. Give him an extra dollar. You'll be completely happy. Uh, and I was completely happy. That 
controller that you see, the different colored controller, it's much like the N64 with their Fantastic series. Dreamcast had something similar with theirs, and I'm going for the variants on there because I'm in love with the Dreamcast system. So to get these two games right here, Soul Calibur and Crazy Taxi, the Dreamcast had the cables, and all these controllers, some with the VMU, some with the Rumble Pack, for $43, I was completely happy about picking that up. Now, had it been an adult selling this thing, I would have probably been like, would you take 30? You know, I would I would have haggled with him. But since it was a kid, it was his, he was in the old school gaming, I'm not going to do that to him. It's harder for me to haggle down kids, especially when you're getting such a good deal. So, I did like the, the reverse of haggling. I gave him extra money. You see some toys over here. I thought this Predator toy was awesome. I don't collect toys, but I'm getting more into it. I'm just trying to get more knowledgeable about it. And some I actually have held on to for my own personal collections. Uh, but I do like to show these things in the footage here because I, I get people with their comments that says you should have picked this up or that up. I will say those figures were like $10 a piece. Unless I'm getting them for a dollar or two, it's not worth the risk for me. And it's got to be something that I really want for my collection. So this is one of my buddies at the flea market. I like to stop and talk with him every time I'm there. He's a friendly person. I always like to give him a hard time whenever I buy something. Uh, but he helps me out. He'll hold on to older stuff for me. Let me look at it whenever I show up. And he had this one random PlayStation 4 Lego game. Um, I asked him how much he wanted for it. He said $5. I told him, ah, then let me get it for 3 And, of course, I got to haggle him down. The disc was in pretty decent condition. Um, it, it's really hard to, to scratch PlayStation 4 games, Xbox One games, anything that had that kind of Blu-ray feel to them. And I ended up picking up this for $3.00. He wanted five, like I'm, I'm telling you, he wanted five so bad, but I, I, I can't buy anything from this guy unless I haggle it down. He knows that. Uh, he'll probably say something at a higher price than he normally would because he knows I'm going to haggle it down, but that's the fun of this guy. And he kept coming back at me. He's like, give me five dollars for it. I was like, it ain't going to happen. But what I did is I found this little electronic handheld. I'm not huge into collecting electronic handhelds, but this one was just kind of neat looking. i uh, missing the back cover. And I said, you know what, man? Since it's you, I'm going to give you $5, but you got to throw this in there with it. So, I mean, I'm always going to get a deal with this guy. If you see him, because, you know, a lot of people say that they have ran, ran into him. He's awesome. Like, a lot of these resellers are. You just got to give them the chance, but make sure you, you lowball them just to piss them off. And in the end of it, get them, you know, give them some money. So, for the final pickup of the episode, I was walking down, still at the flea market Sunday morning. And I see this huge box, had some PlayStation games sticking out of it. I was like, well, let me just look, see if there's anything crazy special in here. Didn't want to ask the price initially until I assessed the situation, kind of get a price in my head uh, for all this. But it is the fat model. Um, had some really nice games with it, you know, Last of Us, some, some, some good games that you would want with that system. The controllers were, were shot, though. They both were missing the joysticks or the, the rubber off of them. Completely not worth it. And then, then I got ballsy and I asked her, I said, how much is this PlayStation right here? She said $80 immediately. I like. I mean, if she said $40, I would haggle it down a little bit more because even that's still a little bit high for something like this. And <laughs> what was funny is she says that one's modded because it plays PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 1 game. I didn't correct her. It's not my place to do so. Uh, she was real nice and kind. You know, there's no need to show my ass or be disrespectful or anything. I just thought that was a funny thing that she said. But what I do find right beside it is this Pikachu... Uh, piggy bank right here. I thought that was neat. I'm not into Pokemon myself, but I know a lot of people that are. I ended up picking this thing up for $3. It's ceramic. It was in really nice condition, and I felt that $3, that was a pretty good deal on that. But I will say that lady is right in the fact that it does play PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, and 1 games, but all the original fat models do, so, you know, <laughs> I don't know who told her the whole mod situation, but I just left it at that. Came across these Pokemon cards here. Um, I didn't pick them up. I probably could have got the whole bag for three or four dollars. Uh, they, they were all like 2017. You know, I pick up the ones that are in the 90s if I can get them for cheap. But even still, I don't know much about them. But me being friendly, me being kind, opened up the door for this next pickup that you're going to see that I got from her. That was a really good deal. Moving further along down her table, I noticed this Wii, and right on top it had the Motion Plus controller with it built inside, not the adapter for the bottom, and I always look out for those. Um, they're, they're still decent sellers. I asked her how much she wanted on this Wii bundle, and she said $15 for everything. It could have been missing maybe the sensor bar, but I'm sure I got loads in the shop, and that's a really good deal. I saw this little Sonic car figure next to it, and I said, well, would you do 15 for all this? And she was real nice about it. She said, absolutely. 
Had I been rude earlier about correcting her about that PlayStation bundle, I may not have gotten this deal. And you do see these toys off to the left. Again, I don't know anything about toys. Um, I left these behind. I tried to look for dates. I looked at the dates on this, and they, they, they were pretty new. So I did leave those behind. If they are something crazy, let me know. But everybody, that is it. That's what I got for this video. I hope you all enjoyed all the live footage. And remember that I will have a pickups video. If you want to see this stuff more in depth, learn a few things about the items that I picked up, there is a separate video that comes out the day this one comes out as well. That is the pickups, the whole recap. We talk about it. We sit down. We look at it. So anyways, guys, I hope you all take care and enjoy the rest of your day.